when two ninth of the two by nine of the votes, so two ninth of the votes on a certain resolution have been counted. When this has happened, three fourth of those counted are in favor of the resolution. Now let's make sure we get this. So some total number of votes out of those votes, some fraction has already been counted. And out of the votes that have already been counted at this point, out of those votes, three fourth are in favor. Not three fourth of total votes, three fourth of those counted. Here also same thing that we dealt with with that motorist question. It's essential to understand three fourth of what? Two ninth of what? Of the votes on a certain resolution. So of our total votes on the resolution. Three fourth of what? Of the votes counted. So basically three fourth of the two ninth votes are in favor. What fraction of the remaining votes? How many votes remain? Two ninth have been counted. So seven ninth remain. Of those votes, what fraction must be against the resolution? Okay, they must be against so that the total count will result in a vote of two to one against the resolution. Hmm. Fairly complex sentence. What fraction of the remaining votes? Remaining votes I understood, seven ninth remaining. Of those votes, whatever that number is, what fraction must be against? Must be against so that the total count, so that overall, including the initial votes that had already been counted and the later votes and everything combined, total count will result in a vote of two to one against the resolution. Two to one against the uh, resolution, sorry. What does that mean, two to one against? So let's say the total votes are, let's say nine. What does two to one against mean? How many in favor, how many against? Now, let me write the other way. How many against? How many in favor? Hmm. So for every two votes against, correspondingly, there should be one vote in favor. Two to one against, right? That's what that phrase means. So if there are a total of nine votes, six votes will be against, three will be in favor. Hmm. Anyone unclear about this phrase? Forget everything else right now. Okay, question. Did you understand that this is what this phrase means initially? When you were going about it on your own? Okay, all right, cool. So I won't spend longer here. Let's carry on. Now, what's going on? Two ninth votes had been counted. Out of those two ninth votes, three fourth were in favor. Let's deal with that first. Ah, I forgot about this. Yeah, the question. What fraction of the remaining votes? So denominator, total remaining votes. Numerator, number of votes against out of the remaining votes. That's the fraction I have to calculate. Out of the remaining votes, how many are against? Divided by total remaining votes. And then we have all these conditions. Okay. So initially, what's the situation? Three fourths of the two ninth votes are in favor. I can continue with fractions or I can take a variable for total number of votes, right? V or something like that. I'm wondering though, can we assume the total number of votes to be some number? Hmm? Does that make sense? Okay, what number? What number should I take 100? 100? 100 doesn't make a lot of sense. Why not? Because I'm dealing with three fourth and then two ninth of those remaining votes. So just to keep life easy, I'd rather have a number that my cancels with four also, that cancels with nine also. That keeps my life simple, right? So a multiple of four and a multiple of nine. Is one number that comes to my mind is 36. Or maybe some other multiple of 36 might work out. What's this total number of votes, right? So understand, after this, it's, it's mechanical, more or less. The key here was to understand the thought process behind choosing 36. If instead of 36, I had chosen 100 as the total number of votes, then my life would have become complex, right? Three fourth of 175, uh, sorry, two ninth of 100 anyway already is a weird fraction, decimal number and all that. So my life would become very complex. So the thought process behind what would be an easy number to choose for this question is essential. All right, now let's say the total votes are 36. What do we know? Initially two ninths have been counted. So two ninths have been counted. That means two by nine times 36, eight have been counted already. And what do we know about these eight votes? Three fourth of these eight votes are in favor. Three fourth of what? Of those counted, of these eight votes. So six votes are in favor. So far, out of eight votes, six are in favor. This much we know. Now, uh, one more thing that tells me that the remaining two votes are against. This is also sorted. 
So the picture till this point is clear. Now let me start from the other end. Eventually, what do I need? I need two to one against. How many votes are there total? 36. So 36 votes, I need to make two to one against. So I want to split 36 into a ratio of two is to one. Basically, that becomes 24 is to 12. Right? If it's clear to you straight away, otherwise, basically 36 divided by 2 plus 1 times 2 is 2. 36 divided by 2 plus 1 times 1. So 30, 24 is to 12. That's the ratio of against is to in favor. Eventually, out of the 36 votes, 24 need to be against. 12 need to be in favor to achieve what they want to achieve. Now, it's a matter of just collecting all information systematically. Eventually, 24 votes need to be against. What's the question? What fraction of the remaining votes must be against so that this happens? How many votes remain? What's the denominator? The total votes were 36. 8 had been counted. So remaining votes are 36 minus 8. 28. And next, of these 28 votes, how many need to be against? We already have 2 against votes. Total, we need 24 against votes. So how many more additional... Uh, Against what do we need? We need 22 more. So that's the fraction we're looking for, 22 upon 28, or 11 is to 11 upon 14. The answer is A. Hmm. AC, you see. So what fraction of the remaining votes? How many votes remain at this point, Abhishek? At what point? At this point. Total votes we took to be 36. 8 had been counted. How many remained? 36 minus 8. An essential part here also was understanding what we are looking for. What fraction of what? Of the remaining votes. So the den denominator has to be remaining votes. <laughs> I didn't randomly pick it, right? I explained how I got there. I'll repeat that. So this, this much was clear to you, Datak, that initially what was the situation? Three-fourth of two-ninth of the votes were in favor, right? So basically, let's do one thing. If let's say, I let me get rid of all this also. Let's say if I assign the total votes to be a variable V. So basically, three-fourth times two-ninth times V. These are the number of votes in favor initially. Would you agree? Where V is the total votes. Hmm. Now, would you also agree that we can take some value for the total number of votes? Because anyway, everything here is in fractions. What fraction of votes and everything, right? We're not dealing with absolute values anywhere. So I clear that we can take some value. All right, that much is clear. So now the question only remains, what value should we choose? So I'm thinking I want a value such that I don't get a decimal after dividing by nine and I don't get a decimal after dividing by four. Right? I want to keep my life simple. If I chose 100, for example, three by four by times two by nine times 100, then I'll get a weird figure. So I decide no, instead of 100, let me choose some number which will give me an easy integer value. So I need, I'm thinking I want a multiple of four and nine. The one multiple of four and nine I think of is 36. We could choose some other multiple also. Yeah, so 36 was key and yeah, the thought process behind that, right? It's not about, oh man, I should have thought of 36 in case you didn't. It's about how did I get there? And plus I spent time. I spent time first thinking, can I take the total number of votes to be something? I didn't straight away continue, okay, let's assume V and continue. No, I took a pause just to think about those things. Perhaps I could have answered even if I kept V as V. But I, I decided, no man, my life will be simpler if I deal with numbers instead of a weird variable and weird fractions. And I'll get very complex uh, expressions, weird fraction, minus weird fraction, plus weird fraction and all that. Right? I didn't want to get into those things. We could still work it out eventually. The Vs will all get cancelled and we'll get the fraction. But this is a lot simpler. Hmm. All right. Uh, here we go.
Hold on. <laughs> this question might seem a little familiar to you. Huh? <laughs> no, it's the same screen. My bad here. Um, yeah, I want you to cover one more thing about this question before we move on to the next one. <laughs> All right. Hmm. Let's discuss that. So I didn't discuss this initially because this itself required a lot of thinking and maybe um, it doesn't even become clear after I explain it. But the reason I'm going to explain what I'm going to explain is that we can reach that stage if we continue dive going deeper. Now, what I am thinking is that of the initial, so what's the question? What fraction of the remaining votes must be against? What fraction of the remaining votes, right? So, okay, I'm thinking in terms of fractions. Out of the initial votes, the initial votes, the one, two ninths that have been counted, what fraction of these votes, what fraction are against? What fraction? One fourth, three fourths are in favor, which means one fourth are against, right? Of these initial votes, one fourth are against. Overall, overall of the total votes, what fraction do we want to be against eventually? Of total votes, what fraction should be against? Two to one against. So overall of every three votes, two need to be against. So overall two by three. Are these two lines clear? That initially of the initially counted votes, one fourth needed to be against. And overall, eventually I want a situation in which out of total votes, two, two thirds need to be against. I'm dealing with against everywhere. AC, is this clear? How I got these two fractions? Okay, now, let's say we are all team against, right? We all want to vote against and we want to get that two is to one eventually. So after the first two ninth votes have been counted, after that small fraction has been counted and we hear that only one fourth are against, we, we all assemble, we have a small meeting, guys, Eventually we need, overall we need two thirds. Right now we are at one fourth. So right now we are lagging behind. So we need to pull up our socks. We need to get our A game there and we need to do better. Right now we are lagging behind, right? That's what we're, that's what I would, we would discuss. So of the remaining votes, of the remaining votes. So the three, three components here. One is the initial counted votes. One is total votes, and then one is the remaining votes. So total minus initially counted. We need to pull up our game. We are lagging behind, right? That's what we're discussing at this point. So pull up our game. What is that? Or pull up our socks. What does that mean? Of the remaining votes, what fraction should be against of the remaining votes? More than two thirds, yes. Only then will we be able to compensate for the initial lackluster performance. Right? Of the remaining votes, we will need to get a higher fraction. Only then will the overall fraction become two thirds. Because initially we only had one fourth against. So we need to compensate for that. And therefore, the answer needs to be more than two by three. And so these three answer choices I can anyway eliminate. Hmm? Could I get to the final answer? No, but I'm way closer. I'm way closer now than I was initially. Right? And What's needed here is all this development. But if I reach that stage where I can think like this, CDE, I could eliminate in maybe 15, 20 seconds after reading the question, maybe even less after reading the question and understanding the question. And let's say if I'm running out of time towards the end of the exam, I would definitely do this. Right? And I'd be anyway, even if I had the time and I needed to go or I wanted to go through the entire calculation, I would still do this because now my confidence is a lot higher. Now I know anyway, I just need to choose out of two options. So even if I get an answer, which is not one by 11 by 14 or 13 by 18, I know it's wrong. I know I made a mistake somewhere. I'll be in a much better mental state at that point.